Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Artie with CoinCasso, and in this episode, we go over the top news articles written in the last 24 hours so that you guys can stay up to date and informed on everything going around in the cryptocurrency world. We saw some pretty wild highs and lows in the last 24 hours in the cryptocurrency market, but overall we are up in the last 24 hours. Let's jump into the news and find out what's going on. This first article is titled, Bitcoin Mining Difficulty Drops by 6% in the First Adjustment After the Halving. The Bitcoin network fine-tuned a key parameter to coax back miners who quit after last week's halving hammered their profits. More than 20 exahashes per second of computing power the equivalent of around 1.5 million older generation machines, has been switched off from the Bitcoin network since the network's halving. The seven-day rolling average of Bitcoin's hash rate dropped over 20% from around 122 exahashes just prior to the halving on May 11th to now 97 exahashes. The once-in-four-years event reduced miners' block reward from 12.5 to 6.25 Bitcoins per block. The hash rate drop after the halving has significantly outrun the hashing sprint prior to it. As such, Bitcoin's mining difficulty, which measures how hard it is to compete for block rewards, decreased 6% to 15.14 trillion. The amount of computing power connected to Bitcoin has been a roller coaster ride over the last two weeks. The mining difficulty adjusts itself every 2016 blocks roughly 14 days, to ensure the average interval between blocks remains at 10 minutes. If a large number of miners are switching off from the network, resulting in longer than 10 minute average block intervals, the difficulty will decrease to encourage participation. And Bitcoin's third halving on May 11th happened exactly at the halfway mark of the previous 2016 block difficulty cycle. We believe that as the mining having drew closer, miners in China did a sprint run of mining, even with older generation machines, to make the most of the last days of the higher block rewards. That's why we saw those sky-high hash rate figures. But as the having kicked in midway, he said miners that were marginally profitable had to switch off. I'm really curious to see how this lower hash rate is going to affect the mining population. And maybe this lower hash rate will be just enough to get those miners back into the profitability range. And now we know that 1.5 million and mining rigs were shut off after the halving. And on to our next article of the day, which is a topic that I'm highly following right now, and that's Ethereum. This article is titled, Here's Why Ether's Price Has Jumped 65% So Far This Year. While Bitcoin is often discussed as the cryptocurrency best suited for turbulent times, the price of Ether, the second largest digital asset by market capitalization, has been substantially outperforming Bitcoin since the start of 2020. But Ether has much different technical dynamics to consider than Bitcoin. As of 8 o'clock UTC, Ether was trading at $211, a loss of less than 1% over the last 24 hours. The native cryptocurrency of the Ethereum network was close to its 10-day moving average, a technical indicator signaling sideways trading. Ether dropped to as low as $209 earlier in the day on exchanges. Amid the recent hype about the halving, a once-in-four-year event that reduces the supply of Bitcoin, and the proclamations of investors like Paul Tudor Jones that Bitcoin is a good investment in an extraordinary economic era. Ether's price has outperformed it. For the year to date, Ether is up a whopping 65% while Bitcoin has risen 35% from the same time period. A much smaller market capitalization for Ether likely helps ignite larger price movement versus Bitcoin. Ether has been long tracking Bitcoin's price action, albeit a higher beta. This means that when Bitcoin surges in value, Ether's value usually increases as well by an even greater percentage. Like I mentioned in yesterday's video, if you think about the fact that Bitcoin's price at its maximum was $20,000, and Ether's price was $1,400. At the current prices of $200 for Ether and $10,000 for Bitcoin, if they were to reach back to that level, Bitcoin would only be double, whereas Ethereum would be seven times higher. Even though it's following the same movement, the percentage is substantially different. And on to our last article of the day, which is titled, This Metric Shows Bitcoin is Undervalued, even after a 150% price rally. Bitcoin has witnessed triple-digit percentage gains over the last two months, yet one metric has turned quite bullish after recent halving event, showing signs the cryptocurrency remains undervalued and still has room to run. The largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization is trading near $9,700, up 150% from its March 12th low of 3867 And while that may cause some investors to think the cryptocurrency is overbought, 
overbought and overvalued, an on-chain metric called the Puel multiple, which marked a price bottom in March, is suggesting otherwise. The Puel multiple is calculated by dividing the daily issuance value of Bitcoin in US dollars by the 365 day moving average of the daily issuance value. It is currently just below 0.5, according to the data provided by the blockchain intelligence firm Glassnode. The reading below 0.5 indicates the value of the newly issued coins on a daily basis is quite low compared to historical standards. Historical data shows bear markets tend to end with the Puel multiple dropping below 0.5. I always think it's strange when people use these technical indicators to predict the price of such a volatile asset. I'm curious to see if they are correct because if they're anticipating a nice bull run in the near future, maybe we could see that $20,000 mark get hit by Bitcoin. If we do, we will see a lot of resistance levels like 11,000 and 12,000, which are big resistance levels in Bitcoin. I think in the meantime, while this whole storm goes on, I might be switching my ass sets over to Ethereum. And that's it for the news, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like the Facebook page, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and join us again tomorrow when we go over the top prices and the top news articles in the last 24 hours. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.